good evening everyone welcome to tonight's meeting of the aunt bill town council it is tuesday december first two thousand and nine at six o three p m for those of you joining us for the very first time in council chambers this evening you will find the agenda and supporting documentation in the little plastic bins by the door where you came in um, help yourself to that information we are being broadcast live on channel twenty eight this session can will be rebroadcast on friday at noon on channel twenty eight and you can also watch this session um, on your uh, computer we're live video streaming as we speak and this session will be recorded so you can look it up anytime at your leisure um, and I believe one more item before we get started this evening if you have cell phones or pagers on would you please turn them off so we aren't interrupted during council deliberations so with that um, I will ask the clerk to read the roll or call the roll Councilmember Dutton here Councilmember Muller here Vice Mayor Dunbar here Mayor Sossaman here Please let the record reflect Councilmember Chilton is absent. Call. He'll be here shortly. Yes. Um, will you all join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Closed session. We had two of them on November 17th and one earlier this evening. Are there, are there any reportable actions? No, they're not. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, item seven, adoption of tonight's agenda. Are there any changes or corrections to tonight's agenda? I'll move for adoption of the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion carries. Thank you. Item eight, public comment. Anything that is not on tonight's agenda? Anyone feel free to come up and give us an earful. Anything? Anyone? Okay, seeing no public comment, we'll move on to item nine, approval of consent calendar. Are there any changes or corrections to the consent calendar? Mayor, I'd just like to um, ask that we pull item A just for introduction. I move to approve um, items B through E on the uh, consent calendar. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Those items pass. Item A, adopt resolution number 2834-09, appointing and approving professional services agreement with Alvarez, Glassman, and Colvin to provide town attorney services. Did you have a comment? No, I just wanted to maybe uh, either you or the town manager could introduce our new team to the public well we would like to welcome the uh, firm of Alvarez Glassman and Colvin as new town council not town council that's us town attorney um, for the town of Yonville mr. Arnold or Alvarez Glassman is here um, with some of his staff would you care to jump up and make a statement or comment and introduce the rest of your team thank you very much madam mayor members of the town council um, it seems like I've been waiting 31 years for this opportunity I'm, I've been practicing law for that period of time and as the uh, town council knows during our interview process I've been coming up here 31 years and uh, I've watched the Yonville grow in many respects and feel very much a part of it uh, we feel very honored and distinct and very honored to be able to be part of this distinguished team We've had this uh, opportunity this morning to meet further with your town manager and your town attorney, your outgoing town attorney, who was very kind and generous with their time in explaining to us uh, the projects that are on the plate and met with various staff members. Um, you will see lots of us, lots of me. I may take the opportunity, if I may, uh, to introduce the individuals that you've seen before and a few folks that you have not seen through the interview process. Uh, Matt Gorman, who's one of the partners in the law firm, is here tonight. Uh, Eve Wengler, who's one of the associates. Uh, Roger Colvin, who's the other named partner, our head litigation partner, he's actually starting a very significant uh, trial uh, starting on Thursday, so he's busy doing trial prep on a very important uh, police defense case for one of our clients. Uh, 
the one that you've heard me talk about but have not yet met is my, my wonderful wife, Lydia. She's uh, up here, and two friends who you've also heard me talk very dearly about, who I've known him since he was 10 years old. He, I coached him in the Little League. I wasn't too good of a coach. He wasn't too good of a ball player. <laughs> uh, but he uh, is an excellent restaurateur, uh, owns La Tequiza over in Napa, and him and his wonderful wife, Stephanie, are here this evening as the local support for, for hopefully this approval. So uh, we're very, very pleased and honored to be able to be part of the Yonville family and look forward to serving you uh, with the uh, utmost of the... Uh, experience and integrity and uh, being part of this town. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Can I have a motion? I'll move uh, for adoption of uh, consent item 9A. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Not in that motion. Carries. Welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Item 10, presentations. And on that happy note, we are going to uh, recognize your outgo our outgoing town attorney, Amy Velukovich. Will you join me at the podium, Amy? In appreciation of your contribution and services as town attorney, December 1st, 2009, on behalf of the town of Yonville, our staff and the town council, thank you for all your efforts, your hard work, and your dedication. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's much nicer than a plaque. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, um, Thank you to the incoming council that is allowing me to be on my way. I've had a tremendous experience here. I appreciate your trust in me when I was new to this position. I've had an incredible time um, learning things that I couldn't have learned otherwise, um, and you paid me for that <laughs> time while I did it. Uh, your staff is incredible, and I'm sure that your new council will uh, work well with them to move the town forward into the future and uh, thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, presentations item B, Parks and Recreation Department Summer Activities Update. Thank you Madam Mayor, members of Council, I'm John DiLorenzo, Interim Parks and Recreation Director. I think everybody realizes the fun and the enjoyment that our services provide, but tonight I'd like to just briefly talk about the essential benefits our services also provide to our residents. Our services positively impact the lives of people of all ages and all interests, and they help to solve community problems and issues, problems such as juvenile delinquency, childhood obesity, diseases and depressions afflicting our seniors. Our recreation programs for preschool age youngsters help to educate them and get them ready for kindergarten and create a sound foundation for them to be successful in school. They also help them to learn how to get along with others and to teach them basic manners. And they help build confidence through exploration, self-discovery, and accomplishments. For our youth and teens, our staff provides mentorship to help our youth and teens uh, help our youth and teens um, make positive lifestyle decisions. Um, our programs uh, supplement their education in school because we provide homework assistance. Um, our programs teach them socialization skills. We help them to resolve conflict nonviolently. And our programs also help build self-esteem so our youth and teens can say no to drugs, alcohol, and tobacco and resist negative peer pressure. The physical activities and the healthy eating education that we provide to our youth and teens combats childhood obesity. And our after school programs provide a productive use of time during the critical after school hours when kids are most prone to get into trouble. And studies have shown without question that after school programs reduce juvenile delinquency. When the town council uh, allocates money for youth programs, we're all investing in kids at the front end before they get into trouble. And in fact, our programs help keep them out of trouble. And that is a much less expensive investment than the criminal justice system when the kids do get into trouble 
and it's much more effective. And oh, by the way, we may just be saving a few lives in the process. For adults, our programs provide a critical life balance between work and play. We help adu adults meet new people and make new friends. Our physical activities and healthy eating education combats adult uh, obesity. Our programs for seniors reduce social, social isolation and alienation and feelings of worthlessness by keeping our seniors actively engaged in programs and by giving them opportunities to volunteer where they can give back to the community. Programs such as our brain boosters help to slow down the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia by keeping uh, seniors' minds actively engaged. And again, our physical activities for seniors help to maintain their health and their well-being. In regard to the parks that we design and uh, provide to the community, that helps folks commune with nature to de-stress to find respite from the struggles of daily living. And in fact, it's been shown through studies that well-maintained attractive parks increase property values, which is a win-win for everyone. I put out at your um, place at the dais this evening um, a recent article uh, published in Western Cities Magazine. This is published by the League of California Cities. It's entitled, Public Safety Depends on Police, Fire, and More. And this article reinforces many of the things I've said this evening. It talks about the importance of parks and recreation in maintaining public safety, reducing juvenile delinquency, and reducing isolation among seniors by keeping them actively engaged. Tonight we have a PowerPoint presentation in which we're going to highlight the Park and Recreation Department's summer activities. This is just a glimpse of what we do and the benefits that our services provide. But I have to tell you that our services are delivered by a very dedicated and enthusiastic staff who have the best interests of the community at heart. So to lead off the PowerPoint, um, Lisa Tyler is going to start. She's going to be followed by Carol Rasmussen, and then I'll be concluding. Lisa. The Yonville Community Pool opened for its 2009 season on Saturday, June 13th. The pool was open for 64 days. Tuesday through Sunday with 100 hours of programming per week for the 2009 season. Um, this season we received an extremely large number of job applications. Ten of the 23 staff members returned for the 2008 season. In addition, we had a new pool manager who did an excellent job of operating the pool. Staff went through weeks of training prior to opening of the pool. The community swim totals for 2009, as you can see, the average daily attendance for community swim did increase in 2009 to 115 participants per day as compared to 103 participants per day in 2008. Senior swim totals decreased slightly in, in 2009 from 662 to 711 participants in 2008. Swim lessons. Swim lessons were very popular again this season. Three swim lesson sessions were taught. We limited our class size to five students per one instructor this year. Feedback from parents indicated they preferred the smaller class size. In 2008, we taught 10 students with two instructors. Our most popular classes were beginning tadpole and guppy lessons. We increased our lesson fees by $3 this year. Comparisons show that they are still priced well below other swim lessons taught in the valley and as you can see um, for 2009 we had 210 enrollment versus 2008 257 swim lesson revenue for 2009 totaled 7,287 as compared to 2008 of 8,583 uh, we we, have, we indicate that the decreased class size could account for um, the difference in revenue based on um, 22 less days of operating this year Pool revenue summary, as you can see, the total revenue for this year was 43861 as compared to 2008 of 36560 um, We had a total increase in revenue for 2009 of $7,301. Next are some aquatic testimonials that we received from um, two local residents and one um, from the Yauntville Child Development indicating that our staff was very helpful, mindful, responsible, 
and overall um, did a, a great job up at the pool this year. Some recommendations for our 2010 season. Um, to offer four swim lesson sessions next year, to increase the lesson fees um, to $40 for residents and $45, to eliminate the adult and youth passes. Um, these weren't used very much this year. We found a very big increase in family passes. We also had people ask for a couple's pass, so we'd like to um, initiate that for next year. To look at um, possibly aqua offering an evening aqua, aqua aerobics class, um, we were only open six days per week, being closed on Monday this year. Um, some of that was due to budget cuts. We used those days for staff trainings as well as maintenance of the facility, and it seemed to work very well. Um, to work with the Veterans Home and possibly um, using their certified staff to prolong the season through September to offer more senior swim um, sessions for them uh, before the pool closes down and we lose staff to going back to college and high school. And to design a schedule for the toddlers, um, they really liked having um, the activity pool open during the early evening hours during the swim lesson times for them to use the facility. Um, these are just some uh, pictures um, of the pool during community swim times of the camps using the pools. And um, next I will pass this on to Carol who will present the 2009 summer camp report. Madam Mayor and Council Members, um, this year we completed our 16th year of summer day camp here in Yountville. Our, our camp offered a full eight weeks of exciting activities to create memories to last a lifetime. Our theme this year was under the sea and we covered many topics each week had a different, we went from pirate ships to treasure hunts, we learned all about the different um, animals that live in the sea. Um, our summer camp consisted well of the eight weeks um, from June through August. Our average attendance for camp was 55 kids a day, which is only one less than last year in 2008, with 42 resident, 53 non-resident. Uh, our summer camp budget. Can we go back? Um, our. Our summer camp budget for 2009, as you can see, our expenses were 47,000, revenue 56, which gave us a cost recovery of 121%, which is very good. Sorry. And then our, over last year's um, 2008, which was only 98%. Our campers went on seven field trips each week we went to a new fun place. Last, our, one of the favorites was we went to the Oakland A's game. Many of the kids had never been to a professional ball game before. We got to go to the Steinhardt Aquarium. We went to the Jelly Belly Factory. I even got the crazy idea to put the kids on the ferry and go to Pier 39. So it was just a lot of fun and um, we definitely got to experience some water activities. Some of our key activities is we uh, collaborated with the Napa County Library this year to uh, maintain reading levels for our kids. We took weekly visits to the Napa Valley Museum where Pat Alexander offered an amazing program learning about some of the history here in Yauntville. Um, one of the all-time favorites of camp is going to the Yauntville pool. We got to ride the shuttle. And this year, um, we started a new computer classes which were each Monday and um, we were able to offer that um, using the school computers, so it was really great. Um, this year we had our summer teen program, the Yauntville Summer Camp. We provided um, an extended program to the teens. They were for, from 6th, um, 7th, and 8th graders. Um, our average attendance for the program was 8 to 10. We also collaborated with the St. Helena and Calasoga teens, so we were able to um, um, make new friends and have a great summer. Some of their key activities is they went um, rock climbing a couple of times. They visited Discovery Kingdom, went to the movies, also went swimming, and got to visit the Concord water slides. Here's some of the testimonials from um, our camp. Um, Lori Weiss, there was a lot of energy. We had a lot of fun. Um, a lot of people appreciated the, the training and the um, programming that went into our program. And on the very last week, we had an extravaganza. I rented the biggest water slides I could find, and the um, fire department was, um, came over with their fire truck and were able to spray all of us on that last day. We had a family potluck. It was so much fun. And um, it was a great summer, and everybody's looking forward to next year. Thank you. Thanks, 
Carol. Um, as you know, we rent uh, our parks and our bocce courts uh, out uh, throughout the year. And uh, in 2009, uh, we had a few less uh, park rentals than in uh, 2008. Um, bocce court rentals, however, increased uh, from 41 to 63 in 2009. In terms of special event, amplified sound and fill permits, we had about the same number issued in 2009, a few less than 2008. And in regard to our youth subsidy program, we had three more grants that we um, provided to uh, low-income uh, families this year. Um, a little bit less in the total dollar amount, uh, but three more grants than last year. So here's some happy faces of uh, Yonville youth and adults enjoying the many benefits of our services, which we're very proud of. And Yonville Parks and Recreation, we create community through people, parks, and programs. And as I mentioned earlier, we have an outstanding staff that's very dedicated to the town. And that concludes our presentation. We'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks, John. Council, have any questions for staff? I have a Council couple, Member Muller. A couple questions. Um, you mentioned that um, the vast majority, I was kind of struck by that, of the um, kids in the summer program are non-residents. Those non-residents, do they live in the immediate area? Do we have any idea? They come from Fairfield or who we're supporting here? Um, we do have several students or some of our campers that do come from North Napa area. Um, a lot of their schools don't provide um, summer day camps and they just like ours. They, the word got out and um, they wanted to come and join our summer camp. So we're excited to have them. Please remember, however, though, that that program has a cost recovery of 121%. Right. right. But is there any participation from these other schools that they attend? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good. Um, also, I had a question about um, your increase in the um, swim lesson fees. And it says that uh, the fees are currently still too low when compared to other surrounding government agencies so you're expecting to what, what is that comparison are we half or 10 percent or um they're in about the 60 dollar range currently right now okay and this year we were at um uh, 36 and 38 and you're thinking about going to 40 and 45 then correct so you'll still be quite a bit yes lower okay and so um, also on the, you're also considering perhaps raising the, the bocce fees by looking at some surrounding bocce courts. And I guess it might be nice when you maybe take a look at that, because I've heard a lot of comments about we need lights out there. When you look at these other courts, could you maybe see if they're lit and what the cost comparison is so we can get some more information about Absolutely. that? Absolutely, yes that indeed. might, uh, we end up raising those, having lights, people, might be happy about that and that's all my questions thanks <coughs> any more questions for staff thank you item 11 public hearing design review pacific blues cafe I am going to have to uh, step down, recuse myself, since oh, we got one more item. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one more presentation. 10C, Capital Improvement Program, CIP update. May we have the staff report? So he wasn't leaving, he was just relocating. We're playing musical chairs. <laughs> Good evening, council, member, or council and uh, Mayor Sossaman. Um, I have a presentation tonight about the capital improvement program. Um, this was adopted by the town council in are we okay? Um, August. So this is an update about halfway through the fiscal year. So with that. Okay. So there are 26 projects in the capital improvement program for this fiscal year. It's a $3.8 million budget. There's eight funding sources such as gas tax, uh, the water fund, and general fund. 
Uh, this is one of the core functions of the Public Works Department, the design and construction of these projects that we're going to go through tonight. Uh, so far this year, since July 1st, four projects have been completed, seven projects are under construction, 14 projects are in design, and one is on hold, which I'll talk about. Um, for the public um, viewing audience, the purpose of the capital improvement program is, is a planning guide. This is a five-year program. It's um, the budget's for one year, one fiscal year. Uh, it's a management tool. It's also for leveraging available resources, such as grants, which I'll also talk about later. And the most important part is protect, preserve, enhance, and extend the life of and improve the town's infrastructure. This is everything from town hall, the community center, streets, parks, uh, even the wastewater treatment plant, and pipes under the ground. So there's the capital improvement program is divided into five areas or functional categories. There's the civic facilities like community center, community projects like the midtown drainage and pedestrian project, drainage and flood control such as removing sediment out of Hopper Creek, the parks and recreation, uh, such as the new park playground equipment up at Yonville Park, and then streets and transportation such as the overlay and slurry seal projects. Uh, the first area is civic facilities. The community center and library project, as you know, is completed construction except for some punch list items. Did come in under budget at $12.3 million over several years. Found some old pictures of uh, right after the ground breaking. This was the uh, during the grading of the uh, the pad for the building. Uh, this is after the foundation had been poured and the framing was going up. And then this is uh, at the project near nearing completion. In terms of community projects, there's the Fennell Place Affordable Housing Project, which is across Fennell. Uh, that is being constructed by Napa Valley Community Housing. This year, there was a contribution of $100,000 in the capital improvement program, and the total over the last several years came to $1.1 million. The Midtown Pedestrian Drainage Improvement Project, which also included accessibility improvement budget, is under construction. There's a $295,000 budget, and there was an additional allocation for design, construction, and the street lights, which was an alternative bid item. Uh, this is Finnell Place uh, this week, so they've poured the foundation for several of the, the buildings, and then they'll continue with the framing, the roofing, the siding, and then the interiors through the winter. Uh, this was the intersection of Washington and Yaunt, and Whistle Stop is there on the left. This is what it looked like after the concrete was poured, and this is what it looked like with the four-way intersection. So that project's moving forward. Uh, there's also improvements in drainage up at the V Marketplace driveway, new curbs, new sidewalks. Uh, this is the bus stop in Vintage Inn across from Humboldt before, and then this is after the new sidewalk's been poured. So this project should be finishing up this week, and then the new street lights will go in in January. In terms of community projects, there's a town forestation project, which is partially complete with the, um, the pruning of the heritage oak tree behind the um, Hopper Creek Condominium Homeowner Association. Uh, we have some other projects we're still working on. In terms of the utility undergrounding program, there's a $146,000 budget for two projects. One is underground along Yaunt in front of Town Hall. The other one is North Washington between Madison and Starkey. Other community projects are tree sidewalk curb gutter replacement, that's in design at 20,000. The town beautification, which is partially complete, has some signs up and we'll be doing some more work at $20,000. Tree grate and sidewalk enhancements, is in design at 15,000, that's on the west side of Washington between Mulberry and Yaunt. In terms of drainage and flood control, the Hopper Creek sediment removal project was completed under budget $12,000. The Hopper Creek restoration is completed under budget at $21,000. This was Hopper Creek at Mulberry with sediment bank to bank and uh, about a foot deep. This is what it looked like after the project. This was Hopper Creek downstream of and south of Oak Circle. And this is what it looked like after the project. So you can see it'll have a little better carrying capacity of flood flows if we have any. Um, this is Hopper Creek near uh, Vista and Forrester. On the left is a, the first diversion pipe. When Hopper Creek gets high enough, the water starts to go through that pipe out to Bear Ditch. Uh, the second place is in this picture. They're moving rocks and reinforcing the bank, um, which goes along through the Vista Homeowner Association. So this is when it was under construction. And this is what it looked like on April 13th when we had a pretty big rainstorm, about five inches. So we anticipate that this will function well, much better this winter. Other drainage and flood control projects are the townwide drainage. 
uh, which is about $22,000. That's in design. Uh, stormwater management, $30,000 budget for fueling facility up at the corporation yard. Hydraulic design study. This is the one where we're reevaluating. We've the phase one has been completed on the Hopper and Henman Creek, and we're going to look at our, some alternatives um, with the with the consultant for moving on to the next phase. We're not sure if we can get this one completed this fiscal year. Uh, Parks and Rec. The Yontville Park equipment improvements. That's construction is nearly complete. Um, the budget is now 94000 after the additional allocation for additional equipment. Uh, the lights have been completed at the south end of the park for Yontville days. Uh, most of the playground equipment is in. We just need to finish the concrete curb around the play area at the north end of the park. And then the park path improvement program is in design with a $25,000 budget to replace some of the deteriorated paths and parks. This is the playground equipment under construction. It kind of looks like Tinker Toys. And then this is the project once it's completed. In terms of streets and transportation, the Fennell Road Bridge Enhancement Project is under construction at $78,000. And the Highway 29 bike path is in design with a budget of $750,000, which is based on an economic stimulus grant. And there has been some additional appropriations um, with grant funding from NCDPA for some design work. And we'll probably have additional appropriations. Um, it looks like we're going to get a full $1 million for this project for some aesthetics, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, this is where the drunk driver hit the barrier rail. Uh, the purpose of these is to keep people from driving into the creek, which can be worse. Um, the concre concrete's been removed here, new curb has been placed, and then this is the metal rail, which is higher and stronger than the old rail to uh, keep cars in the roadway instead of in the creek. And this is weathering steel, so it'll look just like the uh, pedestrian bridge next to it. This is Highway 29 between Madison and California, and the bike path will be on the right or the east side of Highway 29. And I want to show you this retaining wall. Um, we've got approval from Federal High Administration verbally to put an aesthetic treatment on the barrier that's going to be between the bike path and the highway. So uh, we want, didn't want just a standard Caltrans concrete, um, so we're going to put something similar to this. This was down in San Luis Obispo. Uh, in terms of streets and transportation, um, the street resurfacing program is in design with a $100,000 budget. That's to overlay Monroe Street. The slurry seal and patching program is in design. That's uh, the area around Forrester Lane. And then the traffic calming is in design at $35,000. That's a bulb out on Mulberry, just east of the community center. In terms of water distribution, um, we've had construction going on all over town, and we didn't want to leave out Yaunt Street. So there is a main replacement program for Yaunt Street at Madison. And then the service laterals would be replaced for 15000 from on Yaunt from Madison down to Hopper Creek. In terms of wastewater and water reclamation, the lateral replacement prog uh, program and infiltration improvements is completed. Uh, this was some spot repairs, slip lining of some deteriorated sewer pipes in town. Uh, the treatment plant upgrade is a $1.26 million project. That's under construction. You've been receiving monthly reports on that. I have some pictures too. Um, this is what it looked like before. These are the filtration, filtration tanks, and these three tanks are now gone, and there's a hole. So this is the chlorine contact chamber um, with the excavation, and this is a recent picture when they've poured the concrete in the bottom, and then now they're uh, building the walls, which will allow more chlorine um, to interact and disinfect the sewage before it's um, discharged. Other wastewater treatment pr uh, and water reclamation projects are the main replacement program, which is under construction on North Washington for 126000 which the bids came in less than half. Um, it's a very good bidding environment right now. Uh, the treatment plant equipment replacement program is in design for $60,000. Um, this is North Washington. They're that right by um, Washington Square across from Gordon's. Um, so they're replacing the sewer laterals um, so we can abandon the pipe on the east side of um, Washington and everything will flow into the pipe on the west side, which is newer and better. And these are the guys building one of the manholes. So in conclusion, uh, the town center and the treatment plant are upgrades are our largest projects this fiscal year. Uh, there's been significant improvements in flood control. So if we have a wet winter, we should be better protected with less sediment in the creek. The Yonkville Park has new playground equipment. Uh, the town streets have an improved pavement condition index. Uh, this is a rating that the Metropolitan Transportation Commission does. There's an assessment of our streets and all the s streets in the Bay Area. Uh, 67 is fair. Uh, seven of the nine Bay Area counties have a half-cent sales tax for transportation. 
Yauntville is the second highest rating in Napa County after American Canyon, which has lots of new streets, but this is improving, which is uh, positive. Uh, the water system has fewer leaks, which uh, helps on our water supply. The sewer system has less infiltration, so we're not treating groundwater at the treatment plant, which helps. And then we're also designing many projects this winter for construction during the spring and summer. So with that, I don't know if you have any questions. Thanks, Graham. Any questions? <coughs> Bill? I guess I just had one, and uh, probably down the road, but obviously with all of the construction in Washington um, and the digging here and there, is there plans down the road, I guess, that just to resurface the whole thing eventually, or are we getting to that point uh, when we won't be digging it up anymore? Well, quite a bit of it has been resurfaced. Um, some will be resurfaced in you know, the future. Uh, the Yonville Inn project is going to do some resurfacing. Um, but with this, there's a payment condition index and a payment management program where they assess the streets and then put them in order of when they should be slurry sealed or overlaid. So when um, there's excavations and trench cuts, that's taken into account in the evaluation. So it would essentially rank it higher and lower in the in their five-year capital improvement program to, to overlay the street when necessary. Thank you. Councilmember Muller. Uh, just a minor question. The, the bridge repair that's going in, uh, I have two questions on that one, on, on Fennell Road here. Uh, once we're Steve, did, how much did we recover from the insurance company for the drunk driver on that one? And is the, the, the width of the street changing at all? It just I know the barriers are there, so it appears much smaller, but those metal things look large. Is there any change in the width? I'll start with the latter. Uh, no change in the width of the travel lane in part because of our Department of Fish and Game approval. So it's a restoration of the barrier. Uh, the first question is we are in process with the claim um, and we are in negotiations with the insurance carrier uh, with regards to the settlement amount. And <coughs> we will be pursuing that in part since the project's not completed and we can't produce um, documents related to our actual expenses. Uh, we need to verify that. <clears throat> we also had some project enhancements related to the crosswalk that are not necessarily legitimate charges to the accident. So we're working through that. I do expect that we should probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 50% cost recovery for the project. And I should correct myself, the alleged drunk driver. And then on the width, the curb was essentially replaced um, in the same location, so the once these concrete K rails, or is what they're called, are removed, um, then it will go back to being the same width street, a two-lane street. Vice Mayor, not a question, but just two quick comments I wanted to make, and I'm glad you touched on the bid climate uh, because we've seen that on many projects. That uh, one of the reasons that we have been so aggressive about taking care of some of these projects is because of the the bid conditions that we're able to, you know, we have this plan in place, but it's it's a living schedule, and we've moved some things around to really receive some some positive budget impacts. Uh, also, as we've discussed on many occasions, we're also keeping pace with private development, trying to stay ahead of that, just for the reason that uh, Councilor Dutton brought up about not tearing up streets after we've just finish paving them. So it can be a pretty overwhelming list that you give to the public that may wonder why we're being so aggressive in this this era, but I think we're actually being really proactive with our infrastructure improvements and taking advantage of the fact that we, we can afford to do these things now and we're going to be better off in the long run. Certainly replacements before breakage of our infrastructure is, is definitely advantageous. So um, the only other follow-up to that is we just need to be very uh, aware and proactive about reviewing this list of 14 that's still pending to make sure that they are still timely, appropriate, affordable, and all those uh, things so that if we have to push anything back, we can do that. So I know that staff will be on top of that scheduling. Good comments. Thank you, Graham. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Item. Are we done with presentations? We are. Mm -hmm. Item 11, public hearing design review Pacific Blues Cafe. As I was about to state, I am conflicted out on this as my primary residence is located within 500 feet of the subject property. So I will step down and let Vice Mayor Dunbar chair this portion of the hearing. 
Thank you, Mayor. And while you are leaving, I'll just disclose that I had a, a very brief uh, conversation with the applicant not to discuss any of the elements to the project, but just the fact that the project was coming back up before us tonight. So with that, uh, may we hear a staff report, please. The item before you is design review for exterior modifications to Pacific Blues. And this project originally came before you in 2007 when the applicant proposed the initial set of um, design changes. And those are listed in the staff report, but they generally consist of changes to the rear deck that allow, would allow its use in inclement weather. It was the conversion of two non-ADA restrooms um, that would be converted into an outdoor coffee bar. It includes the addition of a patio and the expansion of the rear deck and kitchen. Renovation of the former balloon building into a waiting room and with a new interior connection to the cafe and new roofing, decking, and deck railing. The property is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and given its special status, this, the initial request was reviewed both by the applicant's <coughs> historical consultant and peer reviewed by Napa County Landmarks. Um, both those entities found that it was consistent with the Secretary of Interior standards for renovations of historic structures and the project was approved by council. Before the applicant started construction on the improvements, um, he proposed some changes to the project and those consist of changes to the rear deck cover um, from metal and glass, from metal and glass structure to awning fabric. Um, an elimination of the west access to the rear deck in order to facilitate um, the function of the deck and adding a new south access. Changing out the cable railing for black powder coated railings, adding about an approximately 100 square foot deck to the northeast corner of the structure, adding a gable roof feature and transom above the new primary entrance on, through the former balloon building replacing exterior lighting on the cafe building, adding new lighting on the former balloon building, and adding new cap lighting on the deck posts. And in response to some current concerns of the ZDRB, the applicants agreed to eliminate the south set of access stairs that are used as the current and existing um, entrance to the cafe in order to facilitate access through the new um, entrance at the former balloon building. Because most of the changes affected the east elevation or primary facade of a property listed on the National Register, staff, staff sought Napa County Landmarks review and opinion of the changes and they found that they were sensitive to the existing building and the historic fabric. Um, and then on October 13th, the item was taken before the ZDRB for review and comment and they, their comments consisted mainly related to the primary facade and that would be the north deck expansion, the new gable um, element, the lighting and the railing. And these changes were positively received by the ZDRB, um, but two of the members were concerned with the new, new lines of the gable roof, uh, but did defer to Lap Napa landmarks that found that the roof line was acceptable. Uh, one member was concerned that the new entry would lead to confusion given the that there are two sets of stairs and one of those sets has become um, the accepted and used entrance to Pacific Blues Cafe. I indicated the applicant has agreed to close off that south set of stairs and we're recommending a condition. And lastly, one member suggested a condition required in photometric study um, to be consistent with the town standards and we've included this as a, as a, as a condition. But just this afternoon, the applicant seems to have submitted that information with the lighting specs and the study. Um, we are recommending approval of design review subject to the conditions we've recommended. And I'm available for questions. Does council have questions of staff? Council Member Moeller? No questions. Council Member Dutton? Uh, no, I guess I'll ask the applicant. I, I was just looking back over what was originally approved. And it was quite a bit, and I assume it's going to be some of those, but not all. I understand it's just a phase system. They're um, doing their original proposal, but some changes and then the different phases. Okay. Thank you. I have just a couple of questions. Um, one for clarification, you just mentioned 
I think there may be a little confusion uh, because we have south stairs and we have uh, south stairs on the east side. So we're talking about the existing stairs that are on the east side being eliminated. Correct, yes. And the south um, elevation stairs being added. Yes, both, uh, both of those. Right. So um, how, how does ADA accessibility change here with the ramps, especially on that south facing side where there is the ramp access to the deck? If they're proposing the new stair access from that side, how is that all going to flow? The new stairs are adjacent to the existing ADA ramp, and that ramp will remain to provide access to the rear deck. And then the west facing stairs that go toward the main V Marketplace building would be eliminated as well. Yes. So we're talking about new stairs in the south, new stairs in the <laughs> northeast corner, basically the Bloom Company building. And there's still stair access from the north side um, off of the lawn side? Yes. Okay. Then uh, let's see. Just a little clarification on the reference here to the facade. Um, I want to make sure I understand what the uh, standards are and what staff is recommending. And because I noticed that a couple of the ZDRB members had concerns about the gable uh, at the balloon company entrance. Uh, can you just clarify staff's position on uh, whether it's appropriate, the historic or non-historic value of that specific building and how that relates to this new facade? Because uh, y you mentioned here the changes to this primary facade have the potential of significantly impacting the building, and it, you referenced the concerns from the ZDRB, but if I understand correctly, you're saying landmark review says that's acceptable, so it's really our determination. It's technically acceptable from a historic building standard, but then we have to deal with the aesthetics. Is that correct? Is that accurate? And, and the staff's recommendation is to accept it as being presented. Yes, the the balloon building is part of the national listed property, even though it was a later addition to the original brick building, and so it. Um, needs to abide by the Secretary of Interior standards and there are different um, conditions and qualifications. One of those is that um, additions are respect the historic nature and they don't try to mimic or copy elements and so Napa Landmark's um, opinion was that this stood out as separate and apart from the building and there was no mistaking um, that copying. Um, originally, staff was concerned with the line because it was so different from the flat horizontal lines of the building, but when la landmarks indicated they thought it was consistent and maintained that integrity, um, we support that. And as you indicated, there are two separate issues, whether it meets the Secretary of Interior standards, um, but also design review and whether that's in keeping with the town standards. Right. So there are no conflicts with the Secretary of Interior standards for any of the proposed changes or improvements? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you for those uh, clarifications. Um, being a public hearing, we'll open this to uh, public comment. If there's anybody here from the public that would like to speak to this issue, now would be the time. At least uh, I'd like to potentially hear from the applicant then. I think we should, yes. I want to thank the council for hearing this again and being so long to get this project rolling. And Sandra, for all your help. Um, the gable is just to kind of give the structure a little better look off the front of the building so it doesn't look like a bad hat over your eyes kind of thing because it, it's just a droopy front right now. And uh, I think in in formity of the building of Pacific Blues, it kind of gives it the, the angle look to match. So I don't think it's going to change much at all. And it's just, a, it's basically to cover the front entrance, which will be the new front entrance coming in off the north side of the east. And then the existing, which you were talking about, the steps on the south end down on the west end there will be the new ones, but in, in line with the ramp going up also. And then you'll have the other side for handicapped ramp also. So you have two sides still, just so you know. Is there uh, uh, ramp access only on the south side then, or is there some on the north side? There's one already. Still, there's still that, one on the north remain. and one on the south. That remains. And they will both the remain, yes. Okay. <coughs> and then you'll be also, also to be able to ex or enter from the restrooms on the north side there 
off the lawn area coming through. So that can, that's a pre-existing condition that won't right. change? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, questions from Council? Councilmember Muller? No questions. Uh, thank you. Councilmember Dutton? Uh, Jeff, I think you're going to close that basically main entrance on the front now, I guess, on the east side. I'm going to move on the yeah, east side? The, yeah, to the, you're going to move It's going to be through the balloon shop. Did we just do some cement work in there? It'll have to be knocked out, or was that not part of that sidewalk project? Yes, you, it was part of it. Oh, okay. It was for three weeks there in front of me. Great job, though. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, they went right in front of me, and I have a new highway right, right in front of the deck. Well, I think is, is your question possibly why we... No, no, I think that was done prior to your change in uh, willing to shut off that entrance, correct? Yes. Yeah. That was part of the deal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other questions? Councilmember Dutton. Uh, is, are you going to extend that back deck out now or no? Just leave it the Not same? Not at this point. As, okay. as Sandra said, it'll be stages. We'll do the wine bar first, entrance, and then the half of the back deck with the uh, new roofing and then we'll move into the other phase which will be the final phase which will go out to the north end of the grass there with a, big, a bigger deck okay thank you okay thank you thank you very much with that i will last chance members of the public now that we've heard from the applicant no so i'll close the public hearing then and uh, bring it back for council discussion uh, comments councilmember moeller um, I really like all the design elements, and I'm really glad the staff talked to Napa County Landmarks. I think um, they had some good input. Um, I'm absolutely fine with what the applicant is proposing, and I'd just like to add that a few years ago we had several local serving businesses, and in my opinion this is kind of the last one standing, and I really appreciate having Pacific Blues. I mean, how many times, you know, Tuesday night, where do I go? There's specific blues or Friday morning for breakfast, there they are. And, you know, they've just kind of been there and weathered out everything else. So I really appreciate that. And I love free corkage, so I really appreciate that too. So uh, I am ready to uh, agree with everything in the resolution and since it seems to be fine with the applicant and have uh, no other comments. Thank you. Councilmember Dutton. Oh, I think this is really great and uh, look forward to see it uh, move forward. Thank you. Um, I agree. I was initially concerned because we went through quite a, a thorough review and, and discussions when this first came up, however many months or years ago, uh, about the historic nature and the impacts, changing the roof, um, changing the, the gable fence and, and all these elements. And so I was definitely concerned that um, making changes to some of those after the prolonged uh, discussion was going to open up some some issues for you, but I certainly um, appreciate the ZDRB's feedback and uh, uh, landmarks and the um, the fact that these are complying with the Secretary of Interior standards, which I think are uh, appropriately being followed in this in this case. So um, I think there's general agreement, but we'll be sure to um, confirm that 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 we're excited to finally see this uh, again moving forward and uh, see some very uh, necessary improvements uh, to make the traffic flow, the storage, I mean, just to really enhance the overall experience. So um, thank you for finally getting back to us on this. Uh, with that, um, is there a motion? I'll move for the adoption of resolution number 2840-09 approving design review for exterior design modification to Pacific Blues Cafe located at 6525 Washington Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And there are no others to oppose. That carries. Congratulations. Next item 12, we will uh, welcome back the mayor and Council Member Chilton. Oh no, no. Um, somebody called in and said the internet stream is not working, nor is channel 28 at home. If you guys could, if you could check on that. 
Well, that's no fun. I know. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for chairing that item. Um, item 12, Public Hearing Master Development Plan Amendment, Yachtville Inn Expansion and Affordable Housing Project. Do we have a staff report? Mayor, um, before you begin, I have to recuse myself because the residence was as within 500 feet of this particular project. Thank you. Let the record reflect that Council Member Dutton is stepping down from the dais. Where'd the clerk go? Uh, check on the TV. Are you giving the staff report, yes. Sandra? Thank you. The item before you is an amendment to the master development plan and the development agreement for the affordable housing component of the Yonkville Inn project. And you've seen this project before, and it um, was presented to you as two components bundled together. That included um, the relocation and resizing of three affordable housing units, and that's the item before you tonight. Um, it has been separated from the modifications to the farmhouse, which are not before you tonight. Um, those were pulled from the agenda to provide time for an historian to review the historic significance of the farmhouse, and any future requests to modify the farmhouse will come back before you um, after the conclusions of the historian are made available. So the request tonight consists of a um, the relocation of two units from the first floor of the farmhouse to building two. And building two in that upper left hand corner um, is currently a partially one story building. These changes would make the building fully two story on both the north and south ends. Um, and it would be like buildings one and three that are currently two story buildings. Uh, the third unit in the farmhouse uh, will remain on the second floor. The request also includes the resizing of the three affordable housing units from three studios to two one bedrooms and one two bedroom. On September 8th, the item was before the ZDRB for review and comment, and there was discussion on the unit size and the impact of the change in size on affordable rent. One member disliked the long run of the stairwell blocking the window and the blank south elevation, um, but staff doesn't share these concerns because there's a separation of the stairwell from the building so that it's not flush against the window. And the um, south elevation, if it were to have windows, would look directly into um, the windows of the unit that is just six feet south of that in building number um, three. One member was concerned that the tenants wouldn't maintain the property, although staff feels this impact is mitigated since the ownership is the same as the inn and they have an interest in having a an, um, presentable property adjacent to their um, upgraded inn. The project was analyzed for conformance with the zoning and design ordinance standards and it conforms in all respects to lot area, building height, setbacks and open space, affordable housing, floor area ratio and parking. Uh, but even given this conformance, um, there are two issues that deserve extra attention and that is the height and the massing and the affordable housing. Um, as I mentioned, this will become an entirely two-story structure and it would be in close proximity to the entrance to Gateway and the residences um, on the other side of the creek. Um, and the project does meet the minimum setback requirements from the center line of Creek and from Champaign Drive, and it is, would be consistent with the other two-story structures on the property, but it has the potential of impacting privacy and enjoyment of the resident um, closest to the project on the other side of the Creek. Um, the Creek vegetation um, has been cleared and thinned along the bank as part of the started construction of this project and that eliminates a buffer that had existed. So staff is recommending a condition that the final landscape plan include riparian trees and shrubs um, that are intended to create more privacy and act as a buffer. The other issue is the affordable housing and there has been a change in the distribution of unit size. So there are 17 one bedroom units, seven two bedroom units and one three bedroom units. And this includes a change in the unit size itself. The studios were approximately 350 square feet. 
the one bedrooms um, would now be approximately 540 square feet and the two bedroom would be approximately 775 square feet. The project does meet the town's inclusionary ordinance standards and requirements that call for a range in unit sizes and um, the provision that no more than the than 25 of the units may be studios and with the elimination of the three studios that requirement is met entirely. Um, there's also a requirement that at least 20% of the units be greater than one bedroom and here we have 32% in the two and three bedroom units. Um, there's a requirement that the units be evenly divided among the income categories and here we have eight very low, eight low, and nine moderate income units to meet this standard. Um, but the inevitable result of the larger unit sizes means that the rents will be higher, um, and this is based on the additional square footage from the studios to the one and two bedrooms, and also from the increased um, occupancy levels that are presumed. A studio generally um, accommodates one person, while one bedroom accommodates two, and a two bedroom accommodates three people. Uh, in any event, staff supports the project and recommends approval of the amended master development plan and development agreement. Thank you. Any questions for staff at this time? Councilmember Chilton? Yep. Sandra, Mike, um, you were going through all those different <coughs> metrics there. Is there, is, there anything, is there anything that changes this plan to be, shall I call it, more out of compliance? with any of those standards? I, I didn't hear any. No. The concern has to do with the, there was one is aesthetic and the other is impact on neighbors outside of those. Is that, is that a fair statement? Well, correct uh, to the, both of those. Um, and it meets all the inclusionary standards, but the, the main point is that these affordable units, the three studios will now be more expensive as um, larger units. Okay. And they may meet a different need um, for larger families rather than something very affordable for a single person. Single person. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Vice Mayor? Yes. Uh, one is it pertains to the balconies proposed on these new units. So looking at the second unit two second floor plan, what's now being proposed are two additional balconies facing east, correct? Yes. And the one to the most south, the apartment G, the southeast corner appears to be the most significant balcony. Uh, that is a three bedroom unit, yes. Or no, I'm sorry, that's a two bedroom unit. Two bedroom, right. So um, are you, um, staff is stating that the, with the um, mitigation with trees, you feel like there's sufficient uh, barrier for privacy and security to the gateway residents immediately to the east of not only those units, but now we're talking about four open balconies. Do you yes. think that would be sufficient? Well, and, and keep in mind it's set back 35 to center line of creek, and then there's an additional setback to the units on the other side of the creek. Um, and yes, we feel with some um, denser native landscaping that it would mitigate that impact. What is your uh, thought on elimination of those balconies if that was if that condition isn't is deemed too intrusive uh, I think that would be negative for those units these are apartments um, and a small amount of open space um, is beneficial to those residents um, and space that's directly um, adjacent to their unit that they can use that's privately theirs rather than um, general open space on the property where they can spend time. And looking specifically again at apartment G on that, that south end, uh, that, that south elevation is completely solid right now, I believe. Uh, as you just mentioned, it, it, in the lower uh, rendering there, that faces right up against the adjacent building, correct? That does, yes. Uh, in your opinion, is there sufficient space if that balcony were to be moved from the east facing to the south wall and be a different design element. You're saying that, that then creates a privacy issue with unit three? That's a three? Well, we do have a 10-foot setback between those two buildings. 
there are windows on the uh, north facing side of building three, which is adjacent to this building one. And are those windows on both first and second floor? What I'm getting at is if that balcony were to be moved to reduce the impact to the east, is there an option to move them to the south side of that building? There is, in my opinion, that may have a greater impact because there's no buffer between units where at least along the creek there's some sort of um, element to separate the, the balcony from the living space. Because then the privacy issue just gets transferred to the people in the adjacent building. Okay. May, and uh, possibly the applicant sensing my concern can maybe address that. Yeah. Yeah. And the planning that. director is just noting to me that that... Um, the balcony on the unit you're referencing is recessed or set back from, pulled in from the, right. the building edge somewhere. There's a greater setback from the creek, right. Okay, thank you. Any more questions for staff? Is the applicant here, would you like to address some of the concerns of the council? Good evening, Mayor Sosterman and Council. My name is Joan Tarasa I'm with the Yonkville Inn. And, um, We've been here twice before, just not with this item as a separate issue. So I really don't have anything to add pertaining to any changes that have happened um, in the course of the last eight weeks or so. Um, the architect is not here, so I really can't speak to the possibilities or the impacts of moving the balcony to the south side, although um, I'm certain that if that was a condition of approval, that you know could definitely be taken a look at. and. Um, also, as Sandra and Bob had mentioned, the setback on that additional unit is set back quite a bit further from the already approved units um, in that building. Um, the only other thing that I really have to add is that I had a um, conversation actually today with one of the Gateway Mobile Home Park residents, Donna Hind, and um, we talked about some concerns and our conversations will continue, I'm sure, um, one of which being the privacy issue. Um, along the creek and, and Donna's unit and a few of the other members also or um, residents of Gateway are here as well and I'm sure they'll add their comments. Um, as stated in the staff report where it speaks to a, um, excuse me, where it speaks to a condition of approval as far as the landscaping and creating privacy. Um, that is definitely something that we are more than willing to work with the residents on and with town staff. Um, I did speak with the owner regarding those concerns today and um, that is something that we would definitely you know, take part in and work with the residents to make sure that they were able to enjoy their privacy. And I think also on the privacy issue would also be possibly um, noise issues, things of that nature. And I think as staff, staff has stated, because the ownership is the same with the mobile home park, the housing and the yacht bill in, um, we really will be working together and make sure that this is a cohesive living environment for the enjoyment of both our guests and the residents. Any questions? Good, thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Is there anyone from the public who would like to comment on this item this evening? Uh, Donna Hine, 6424 Washington Street, Space 38. I'm here speaking this evening not as a representative of the Gateway Mobile Home Park, but as my for myself and an, uh, the resident who resides next to me. And I will first read a note from her. <coughs> Excuse me. My name is Tony DeLong. I live at Space 37, Gateway Mobile Home Park. I have lived here for 12 years. My lot is at the perimeter of the park by Hopper Creek. My space used to have several trees in the backyard. When the flood wall was built, most of those trees had to be removed. One large almond tree was left, but it recently fell over and had to be removed at my expense. With the removal of several trees on the other side of Hopper Creek, very little privacy remains in my yard. The two-story workforce housing offers windows and balconies looking onto my backyard as well as my neighbor's yards. I cannot attempt to remedy the situation by planting another tree because our park rules and regulations 
forbids, forbids planting anything tall, Section 3, Part D. In good weather, which is a good part of the year, I spend a lot of my time gardening, entertaining, and just relaxing in my backyard. I am concerned about the lack of privacy and the increased noise because of the workforce housing. <clears throat> I want to say that I have, I'm being consistent in that I have always supported workforce housing, housing for families uh, of low, lower moderate income. In this instance, um, when you put the second story on the other building, I will have no sunshine in my backyard at all. Uh, I currently uh, enjoy raising and enjoy a quantity of roses which will have to be removed from my yard. Uh, I would like to feel comfortable that Mr. Altamira will share the expense of that because of my losing what I had valued at one point as far as my location. I understand that I had to lose a view from my windows, but I still have other views that, that I have not lost. Uh, I am also concerned that on the Hopper Creek side, when the creek was cleared and when the trees were removed in the cleaning process there, and at the time that the wall was built, there were a couple of trees that due to the wall, I'm sure that the roots were very severely, I don't want to say damaged, compromised may be the better word. When we had the winds the other day, I looked out my window and I thought that the one tree was definitely going to come down. Now I have in my backyard a joint pole, utility pole, that is shared by PG&E and Comcast. If that tree had come down, we would have been without power, we would have been without uh, without Comcast. I have a separate issue with Comcast about how they did some wires, but that's, that's not an issue that you need to be involved in. But I hope that we're able to work with Mr. Altamira, and as far as privacy and trees on the side of the workforce housing, that I understand and that I know has been built into the project, but it's now trees and shrubs that we will require on our side of the housing. So that's my concern. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else comment on this uh, project this evening? Alrighty, seeing none, I'll close the public comment, bring it back, back to Council for further discussion and or a decision. Bob, what's the maximum building height of the second two-story buildings? For apartments? Uh, Roof height? 20, 28 feet, I believe it is. Okay. And these are, these are not up to that. Oh, they're not even? The roof height peak? No. There, there were under the requirement. I can. Uh, they're find closer to 20. Okay, 20 feet, and they're 35 feet from the center line of the creek. And then the are the mobile homes. Uh, their fence line or the homes themselves are they 35 feet from the center line of the creek? This is the. Uh, let's see. If I have this, right. this line running through here, center line of creek. Okay. And then the flood wall is indicated here. So okay. the edge of the these homes may be slightly within that, but uh, not by much. Um, probably right at around 35. Okay. Now this is the this is the unit we've been discussing, and as you can see, it's recessed in more. So there's a good about 70 feet uh, from this edge here, which is the 35 foot line, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 35 to there, and that's probably a little less than 35. But we're looking at a home that's tucked up, or this this unit, the second unit that's tucked into here. As far as the sunlight issue, I, I don't believe that's going to have a tremendous effect on casting a shadow 70 feet that direction. 
that they're going to experience a loss of, of uh, light in the yard. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Muller? Um, I still think the council got it right in 2006 when they approved the original plan. I just don't see anything, um, really a need to um, endorse this amendment. Um, I know we're going to study the farmhouse. Maybe the outcome will be we're going to tear it down and build something like it, or maybe we'll maintain it uh, to some kind of historic level standards. It's going to have two affordable units in there, uh, regardless, unless there's a, another alternative. I haven't been able to figure out what that could be yet. So um, I, I, I don't support this. I maintain that the council got it right in 2006 with the original plan. Thank you. Council Member Jilton. My, uh, my primary consideration when looking at this was, uh, was, was twofold. One is what kind of impact does this have on um, the site as a whole from a use perspective and a, and a visual perspective? And the second is, is the impact on the neighbors, which I think is probably the most important part of it. Um, I don't have any issue with, with moving the um, um, affordable housing units to, to this. I, I think aesthetically it will be fine on the project. Um, I think that the developer has already gone well above and beyond when it comes to fulfilling their affordable housing obligation. And I think that the, the units are actually an improvement over what was crammed into that, that farmhouse. Um, so from that perspective, it's good. Um, from the neighbor's perspective, um, uh, I saw Donna sort of mouthing, you haven't been in my backyard. Uh, I've been at the front of her house, but I haven't been in the back of her house. Um, I, you know, I think that most of the impact uh, is probably already approved <laughs> and uh, is going to happen anyway. Uh, I do think that, that having seen what the clearing of, of that creek has done for privacy, I do think that this is a, um, I say, this is a request that the council has at its discretion. I do think that we should take advantage of the, of the situation and, and require adequate privacy screening um, because this is, is even more of an impact than it was before. So I would like to see uh, uh, Sandra and Bob have that uh, written in as a condition of approval. And I think that may be in there already. Mm. You referred to it. <clears throat> if I may, uh, I so believe Councilmember Chilton, you're asking for stronger language On including provision of landscaping. Yes in the existing mobile home properties on the east side as well as landscaping <clears throat> on the westerly border? That's correct. So with, we could make those modifications to the resolution easily enough and work with the applicant and the affected property owners to develop appropriate landscape plans. And I think considering this is the developer and it's their own rules for the park, they can probably make exceptions to their own rules and uh, it would make sense in this case to come to a kind of a three-way mutually ex acceptable solution on the privacy side of it. And if you've got to take one thing out, well, maybe the next thing should be address that, that privacy issue. So other, that, with that one condition, I would support this. Thank you. Vice Mayor? Well, uh, the vast majority of the um, changes requested I am comfortable with there's one great exception, however, and that is these balconies. And for me, that, that changes the relocation of these two units on the second floor from an acceptable to an excessive impact on the, on the gateway residents. Um, I'm a little disappointed that the architect isn't here to discuss whether there are reasonable options to um, relocating the balcony. The, the biggest concern for me is the, the apartment G balcony, mainly because of its size. Uh, and I appreciate the mitigation with the trees, uh, but I think all of us know how light and noise travels in this town. And even with the trees, that could help with the light, but there's no way that's going to stop the noise uh, we're talking about adding uh, to this second floor. So um, unless I can feel satisfied that we're um, 
we're going to um, better manage the, the impact on the residents of the east. Um, I'm okay with the second story units themselves. I'm not comfortable with the, the open space balconies outside because of the noise and the, the light factors. I, I realized that we had already approved those in the previous two units, but looking at the, uh, the footprint of those balconies, they're sig substantially smaller. Therefore, uh, uh, not nearly as uh, impactful, I don't think. I mean, the balcony on the southeast corner is, is significant, and you can have any number of people out there uh, at any one time, so I'm, I'm just not comfortable with that right now as it's drawn up. So uh, I would still need to see some kind of uh, revision to the impact uh, to the residents to the east. Like I said, I'm, I'm okay with the concept of relocating the units, but not as they're currently drawn up. Okay, thank you. Um, and I would uh, disagree. I'm very comfortable with the design plan, and um, we have already approved balconies on the second story. Um, as the applicant stated, that balcony is set back significantly. And yes, while it is a larger balcony, it's not much larger than the other two balconies combined. So I mean, any number, you're right, any number of people could be out there at any one time. Um, but I think they're necessary features. Um, moving it to the side of the house wouldn't really make sense to me. But um, I'm comfortable with the plan as submitted. Um, I think with the uh, 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 landscaping and planting plan for screening um, on both sides of the creek, it would uh, be beneficial to the residents. Uh, the distance between that balcony and uh, the nearest resident is, uh, like uh, town planner said, is probably over 70 feet and within that 70 feet distance there are uh, trees and shrubs and things of that nature and we're not talking about the south corner we're talking about the uh, corner closest to Champagne Drive so the distance looks even further to me on this map so I'm comfortable with it as submitted and uh, incorporating the uh, uh, native habitat planting and screening features I could support this Bob I have one comment. This, the balcony that's under discussion, this depth here is approximately almost twice as much as these other balconies. And uh, just a suggestion if it might mitigate uh, Councilman, uh, Vice Mayor Dunbar's concern regarding the size of the balcony if it were to be pulled in and um, not quite as big. Yeah, it should be the same size as the balcony on the north end. Mm -hmm. I mean, they should all be the same, equally the same size. I, I don't understand why it has to be so large. Is that the roof of the un, the house beneath it? it? It may be where it matches or uh, joins up with supports underneath, but they could uh, put braces out and cantilever it in or pull it in from even that support. It's a big balcony. I'd like to have a big balcony if it was my place, but... Um, make it the same size as the other balconies. Would you be comfortable with that? Draw it back. Well, what I'd like to see is I like those it. things opening up onto the balcony. It's a hot water heater on this side and uh, storage on the other. Oh. I believe that's what that is. If, Mayor, you asked me a question about whether that's mitigation enough, and, and uh, it is a, um, it's certainly a step in the right direction. I would like to have the opportunity to ask the architect what our other options are, uh, but we can't do that uh, tonight anyway. Um, I would even recommend, and I realize we're only meeting once this month, uh, but I would recommend uh, getting feedback from the architect about any options we might have to uh, either reducing this balcony to a more acceptable size or uh, repositioning it to minimize the impact. Um, and I realize that would then cause impact to the uh, residents of, of the adjacent building. Uh, so 
What size would you propose? I don't have a square footage in mind, Mayor. Um, I do know that if you put um, 15, 20 people out there, it's a significant noise impact. I'm sure of that. If you put four people or fewer out there, it's a greatly uh, reduced noise impact. So, and I appreciate that. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if, if you would uh, welcome hearing again from the, the applicant that is here about uh, what flexibility there is. I mean, if they're not willing to make changes, then we don't need to continue talking about it. But if, if they are, or if there are other options they're willing to consider, then I'd be interested in hearing that. Is the applicant interested in speaking to the issue? I'll reopen the public hearing. You gonna make that a smaller balcony, Joan? I'm pretty comfortable that we can. Um, yeah. You know, unfortunately, without Jim Jeffries here and not being the architect myself, um, you know, I can't say that for certain. But I think that our main priority is to get these units moved over to a place where we think that they would, you know, afford a better quality of life. And I think they actually do fit better in this location than they do as two small studios on the first floor of a farmhouse. So, um, you know, without knowing structurally what the impacts are and the roof line, things like that, um, I would think that we can, if it could be a condition of approval, that um, we would come back with something and, and mutually agree upon a smaller size, um, I think that that would be acceptable. I'm just going to make one observation that the uh, from the elevations, it does not appear there would be any interference to pulling that in. It's, there's not a roof line below it. It's a patio below it. So uh, these, wherever they are, let's go back here. Yeah, there's the, there, that's what's below it. It's an open patio and they could be pulled back. Uh, the columns that are supporting this second I keep going the wrong way and by the way that other one I identified as storage is a uh, air conditioner oh good so You're comfortable if, with that was as a condition of approval if I may ask mayor uh, ask of staff uh, are you comfortable having that condition in place that uh, you could determine I'm not sure what to, how to ask this, uh, an appropriate size, uh, and my problem with trying to figure out what an appropriate size is is because uh, I'm talking about trying to decrease the ability to have too many people out there, and I, I would defer maybe to your expert opinion on how big a balcony needs to be to be usable but not so large as to be able to have a significant number of people out there making noise at one one right. time well if you have a look here and you pull the depth of the balcony back with the water or, or uh, water heater and this other enclosure which the doors will now have to open inward this way uh, it's going to really reduce the usable area to uh, just outside the doors and uh, make it more in line with the size of these other balconies well, you have the idea in mind that I'm going for here is to, whether it be cut it in half depth-wise, um, I just don't want to say cut it in half and then find out that there are some kind of logistical issues to that. Um, but it sounds like the applicant is willing to work with you, and I would trust your judgment on the guidance that I'm asking for in order to be able to, to approve it as, as being presented. So if you're very clear on my concerns, that I'd be willing to add that condition. Staff is clear on the concern. All right. Do you have I was, was going to say, I have no problem with the balcony. I'll restate that. But <clears throat> I don't know why we would make it less usable. But if it's, it seems to me that the balcony should all be the same depth. So just say that all four of them are the same depth or whatever the largest depth of these other three is, that's the largest that will be. In, be done with it. Somebody want to make a motion? All right, I'll make a motion. <clears throat> to approve ordinance number 
you have the resolution. On a resolution. You have the resolution first, and then you, you have the introduction and waiving of the, of the first reading of the ordinance to amend the development. That's what I was like, this is the first reading? Park, there it is. Yeah, uh, resolution number 283809, approving the master development plan amendment, uh, et cetera, uh, for the Yonville and expansion. Um, <clears throat> with the two um, changes to this resolution that have um, a need for the developer to make uh, privacy and uh, landscaping adjustments to uh, both the east and west side, including the property owners in, uh, or the property, the residents of Mobile Home Park, to work with staff, the residents, and the developer. The second, res the second uh, change is to amend the balcony on the apartment G to be no deeper than any, the largest depth of the other three balconies and staff will work on an amenable plan that meets the council's expectations. I'll second that then. All in favor is of the motion as amended? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you, that motion carries. I'll make a uh, motion to introduce ordinance number 381-09. Uh, approving the amendment number one to the development agreement by ordinance number 36367-06 uh, also to waive the reading. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you. That motion carries. Are we done with that item? Okay. Item 13, staff informational reports. Community Center Library Project Status Report. Again, as you uh, may recall, uh, Councilmember Dutton. <coughs> Bill. These two items are uh, this section of your agenda packet is for informational purposes, and unless the council has any questions, um, staff will not make a detailed presentation on these areas. Good. Can I make one quick comment? Certainly, yes. That was a question to you. <laughs> um, I just want to make a statement that the, um, the community center budget, um, as it has been for meetings and meetings and meetings, is for all practical purposes unchanged in terms of the contingency, which is great. Um, so we're still tracking to, uh, uh, we will have an under budget project, as we said earlier. And, um, you know, a lot of thanks go out for that. But we're still on that same path, and that, that should be mentioned. Outstanding. Good. Congratulations to everybody on that. I uh, second that, uh, Mayor, too. They put in a lot of hard work over the year, and I yep. certainly appreciate it. It's a beautiful project. If you haven't seen it, go take a look. Um, wastewater treatment plan upgrade status report. Any questions on that one? Water efficient landscape ordinance introduction. Anybody got any questions or... Comments on that? No, I'll, I'll make some additional comments uh, later because we discussed this at the WIP board. Okay, good. Uh oh, <coughs> there it is. Item 14. Actually, I have a few under other comments just to share briefly. Um, one, I'd like to uh, point out that the town of Yountville and our community pool in partnership with the Veterans Home we were selected and featured as a profile in the December 2009 issue of um, ICMA's uh, Public Management Magazine, and that's the International City County Management Association, and that's a fairly positive kudo to the town uh, to have its pool and its operations uh, profiled as a positive example of what a small community can do. So on behalf of our staff, and I think the council really should be proud of that acknowledgement. And again, also the, the partnership that we have with the Veterans Home uh, for that unique facility. Um, some very late breaking news that we're very excited to share. Um, as of approximately 4.10 this afternoon, the town has been advised that we have received a tentative approval for two additional MTC federal stimulus grants that staff has been working on. Um, the, this comes with good and bad news. Um, I will have Graham explain a little bit of what the projects that staff had applied for when we realized there was some excess funding in Napa County that hadn't been allocated. The bad news is I will need you to meet briefly at a second meeting in 
on December uh, to approve a resolution authorizing acceptance of the grants. With that, I'd like Graham to explain what the two projects that we submitted for that we've received tentative approval. As you may know from the NCTPA meetings that there is a transportation enhancement <coughs> program. Uh, there's about a half million dollars that's been available. Um, we did submit an application for this and were awarded. Um, there were four applications, three were approved. Uh, the first one is to extend the, the bike path from, which now goes from Washington to Madison. It would go down Madison with a crosswalk at Highway 29, and then it would continue up to Yauntville Park, then across Monroe, down Yaunt, and then over to Yauntville Crossroad. This is a $204,000 application. Um, it was approved. The second one is an application to do sidewalks south of the Yauntville Inn down to the church in the southern limits. Uh, this would be on the east side of Washington at the south end of town. That was a $61,000 application. Um, what we found out, even though there was a 50-page book on how to fill out the application, um, we also need to do a resolution with specific language from MTC that says we shall do this, that, and the other thing. So we'd like to do a staff report and a resolution to bring back during a special meeting for your approval. Okie dokie. You want to good. pin down a date? We'll work with you on okay, that. Okay, good. It, it does need to be before the 16th, so 15th will be the second Tuesday of the month. I was just throwing that out there, if that's possible. Does the 15th work for everybody? Sure. I have no idea. <laughs> All right, I will, we will communicate with you. As long as it doesn't Again, cut into cocktails. This will sure. be a very brief meeting just to approve the item uh, so that we can meet the funding requirements. I will point out that um, this is an example where staff sat down and said there's some really good things, but you just heard a CIP project mid-report mid on where we're at. And, uh, these will be two projects we're adding to that, but we think that they're consistent and we think that they have strong benefits. So um, I may be doing some adaptation to a couple of the projects to, to justify priority and stay within staff ability for delivery of product. But these are very consistent with the council's priorities to improve pedestrian access and make things safe. And getting a connection all the way to the Catholic Church on the south end, I think, is really important. And then continuing to work on the focus for the bike trail and our partnership with the Vine Trail, I think is a very good good outcome, especially since we've been successful with the million dollars for the bicycle trail bypass. If I may ask a question, is there any way to tie in that gravel uh, lot? You're talking about only on the east side of the street? Correct. So th is there any way to include the west side in that project or I'm going to practice what you guys asked me earlier no <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that succinct clarification um, I, I would just like to uh, thank you for digging in and going and getting it obviously you had a little more uh, get-go than some of the other jurisdictions so and these are just little things that we can do for our town that uh, hopefully the citizens appreciate it and when they see that done and realize that uh, that's newfound money. Are there any other staff reports or comments? No. All righty. Council member meetings, reports, and comments. Flood control did meet today, and uh, we had to pass several resolutions of necessity and and take some property so that wasn't fun but we did it and uh, there wasn't any controversy or issue or or any opposition so we get we're getting the job done um, that was for the uh, Napa Creek flood control project um, NCTPA um, NCTPA had a very short agenda um, at the last meeting um, the only <coughs> substantive item that was discussed, most of which was discussed in closed session, um, but the one piece of information that's public is that um, the uh, uh, NCPA just did a RFP for transit services in the county. The losing bidder has uh, appealed that twice, lost both times, and has now filed uh, papers in court to try to force a new bidding process. So that's uh, I think everybody expected that. So that's uh, 
that's the one thing that uh, is still lingering on about that. And then we have a meeting in mm, next week. Mm -hmm. So 16. not a lot going on. Other than that, WIC. Um, the WIC board met last Thursday and uh, had a long meeting. There was a lot of information. Uh, first, I'm sure everybody read their three megabyte uh, file that we got on item 9C for all the um, emergency mitigations that we're putting in place. And you can see that there is a lot of things going on in terms of flooding, which has uh, a lot of input from the people who work for WIC and the WIC board. Um, one is the what's called the Rutherford dust restoration. So that's when they go along the creek and we're making sure that the, uh, the creek is not not just healthy for the fish, but mostly for our flooding, getting rid of um, a lot of issues with that. And that's now been complete from um, Rutherford down to Oak Knoll, and then it's going to continue further south. But before they do that, they're going to, they're starting now on the Zinfandel Bridge project. You might know that old bridge on Zinfandel Lane. It's, uh, I think it's gonna be 100 years old next year and a half. So they're trying to get it finished so they can have the bridge party. But there's just some small holes and it kind of runs off into a big cliff. So they're going to widen those holes and smooth those uh, drop offs off so the fish don't, I guess, just fall or something. And they can get more water through. That was kind of the main gist of it. Uh, also, the um, there was a lot of discussion about the, the new water ordinance going in. And I have some more information. And I know Bob put it in his staff report. But there's some other kind of minor things with that we will consider in detail when we look at following either the state ordinance or the, the WELO. So I think that there's some things in the WELO that are good, but some that if we adopt it as a whole, are just kind of crazy myself. But we'll look at that later. We talked about that quite a bit. Um, and they wanted me to announce that on December 14th, if you're interested, contact the WIC board. The Christmas Audubon bird count will be coming up. So it's going to be all day. So if you're interested, this is where our region kind of gets out and counts the birds and put all the numbers together. And then um, they also gave us two more Hopper Creek signs. You might have seen some of those brown Hopper Creek signs popping up. And Steve's got six more coming after that. And then all of our Hopper Creek um, signs will be in place around town. And then just one other comment I wanted to bring to everyone's attention. The, now that the community center is open, people are probably seeing that Bartisono path. It's kind of covered in weeds on either side. You know, you have the nice Bartisono Inn, the nice community hall, then this path. You know, this is kind of covered with weeds on either side. I'm not sure if we just have easement for the path, who's responsible for landscaping on either side of that. One's a bioswale, supposedly, but Somebody, I think, at the bar zone is just piling a bunch of twigs in there, so nothing's swaling at all in there, I don't think, anymore. So, and also, on the east side of that walking bridge that goes over Hopper Creek, there's a big patch of decomposed granite that I think should have been concreted in, and all the, some of the older ADA accessible people are getting stuck in that DG as they're trying to get across the bridge, so we might want to look into that and just a thought next year when we're putting all of our CIP plans in place, I think it's a little bit of low voltage lighting along that path since it's going to be, people are going to be taking a lot more. It's going to be part of the art walk and, it's, you know, going to the community hall. When it gets dark, you can't see what's going on there. So that's it. Thank you. Any other uh, reports or comments? Councilmember Dutton? I just, well, I think there was a number of public events that happened. I'll, I'll just mention one, because I'm sure somebody's going to mention the others. But uh, uh, I did talk to uh, Barbara Delinsky, uh, obviously, for the Thanksgiving Day dinner. And she reported uh, the biggest year they've ever had, 450 people they served. Unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to help this year. I went to the families this time. but. Uh, I wish I could have, but everybody said it was really successful, and I know everybody pitched in. And you know, once again, that's just a great thing that uh, uh, this town can do. Okay, and I just one other uh, I think, Councilor, 
Moeller mentioned about the pass, uh, you know, time does fly. And I think uh, next week we'll celebrate the one year anniversary of the probably most beautiful walking path in town being closed uh, behind Hopper Creek. Any more comments? Not a quick one. <clears throat> I just want to make a statement. I was, uh, I missed the first 45 minutes of this meeting. Um, um, I'm part of a group um, that's uh, uh, working um, to work with the school district to protect and save Yonville School right next door. Uh, there was a PTA meeting um, scheduled, of course, for tonight at 6 o'clock um, to deal with that, that subject, so I felt like I needed to be there. But uh, I would say there was 75 people over there, which is, again, <clears throat> I think it's been pretty clear to me in the last couple of weeks how much this community values that school. Um, I have one child and soon to be two who will go there. Um, so there's a lot of work going on that. Um, if, if you're interested in being actively involved in that effort, we're looking for not just parents. We really want to get the whole community and I'm sure I'll come back and ask the council for some, uh, uh, for some things as well. But uh, we're working on that and trying to get answers and trying to understand really what we need to do because uh, that's the hard part is it's, it's it's a bit unclear and I don't think the district even knows of what's the situation as the budget crisis drags on and on and on in the state. Um, but we're putting together a, a, a strategy and an action plan to, to protect that school because um, that's, a, as we all know, a vital part of this community. So thank you. Good. Thank you for your comments. Anything, Vice Mayor? Yes, I'll just add one thing to my very brief list and that's um, to Council Member Chilton's point, uh, both Council Member Dutton and I were at the uh, school board's uh, public outreach a couple weeks ago, and I think it is important that we are there as uh, not only town representatives but non-parents, uh, because neither of us have children in school there. But it, um, the intent was to really show a, a community-wide support for Yonville Elementary and. It is a unique uh, situation we have here as being a small community. It's our only option for local education. Uh, I was very impressed with the, the approach the parents are taking, and I'm sure at the PTA meeting it continued, that they're not just saying, please save our school. They're really giving uh, legitimate reasons to the board, uh, realizing it's all going to come down to, to budget constraints, but uh, giving them um, realistic options and having an intelligent dialogue I think it's gonna be critical um, just going to my notes real quickly I'll leave the ribbon cutting to the mayor but um, the festival of lights that we just enjoyed last Friday was uh, even with the cleansing rain that we had was really a, another beautiful uh, town event uh, put on by the Chamber of Commerce and if anybody's been out since the sun's gone down in the last few days it really it is a kind of a magical landscape that we have here in town. So get out and enjoy that. Uh, also, December 11th, we're not, we're not done having parties over at the community center. Um, the living Christmas tree, tree lighting, and the uh, public, more public open house of the community center and library is gonna take place. And one of the, the uh, nice additions that we're going to uh, present there is a new local art exhibit. We've been gathering uh, the subcommittee, the uh, arts, uh, subcommittee has been uh, gathering local art and artists to uh, uh, put on display and we're going to have a whole series coming up but um, that'll be another new uh, fun addition uh, with some of our really talented local local artists so another reason to come by the new community center so with that if you wanted to review the the big yeah, day. thank you for those comments. Um, yeah, we did celebrate it. We have a milestone celebration this week, and it was, or last week. Last week, God, it seems like a long time ago. Um, our ribbon cutting for our new community center, and it was really exciting. I know, uh, Arnold, you were here. You saw the facility. I don't know if the rest of your family and uh, friends and and co-counsel saw it but it's it, it is a spectacular facility and we're very very proud of it and very excited to get it up fully running and functioning for the community and 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 everyone all over the valley is talking about it so and uh, be excited to uh, learn of its eventual certification in terms of its LEEDS standard 
Um, we're really looking forward to that, but it was an exciting event. We had a lot of special guests attend and uh, nothing but wows coming from every everyone. So um, we were really proud of that. And then uh, Vice Mayor touched on the Festival of Lights. It is beautiful. If you haven't been here in the evening, you got to go up Washington Street, up and down, up and down. I'm just driving around burning up gas. and. <laughs> But um, no, it's really, really pretty, and the company that does that uh, lighting job for us uh, did a great job. I'd like to thank uh, all that glows. And Bill um, mentioned the Thanksgiving dinner, and I just wanted to mention the fact that uh, the Vintage Estate Group, their chef and culinary team prepared that meal and donated all that to the uh, community. So we're very, very grateful and very pleased that their, uh, that their community involvement is, is what it is. And, we're lucky to have them and everyone else who steps up and volunteers and helps out. So um, with that, I don't think I have any more comments. Um, this is our last meeting for the month of December. That's actually not correct. Well, I know. Right I was going to go there. Give me a schedule. break. We're, we're going to have a brief, uh, brief special meeting to uh, approve the, uh, uh, the grant funding that was obtained through MTC. Um, but we won't have a regular agenda, um, but, and it is public, uh, it is open, uh, will be open to the public for comment. Um, but uh, future agenda items, we're going to be uh, addressing our six month progress report regarding the town council's goals and objectives for this year, uh, this year and into next fiscal year. Uh, and we will have our uh, annual, comprehensive annual financial report our CAFR by Mr. Terry Creek, our CPA. Um, so we will uh, set that date and uh, make it known. And, and uh, we adjourn to the next meeting. The next regular council meeting will be Tuesday, January 5th. However, a special meeting will take place between now and then. Date to be determined. My favorite item. Item 16. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.